Today on Singles Court, Joanne's ex hubby makes Evan huffy. If this is part of her daily life, and I'm going to be part of her life, then I want to find out who this guy is. He thinks the visits are X rated. She spent the the, the night with her ex husband. She wants him to stop being childish. Does he have to meet every single patient I go in? No, Ron is a patient. And Brenda's fixation on fame is striking out with Bob. Every time she sees something in a magazine or on TV, she's going to buy it. Now her plans to add a little sting to their sex life have landed her in the penalty box. Look, I'm talking about a vacation. It's a sex vacation. She wants to go. You she don't wants have to have sex. You know, you have sure, I want to have sex up. in the privacy so of my own room. I'm Michael Day. Welcome to Singles Court, the number one show on the Singles Broadcast Network and the place where singles come to find help with their relationship problems. And here's the lady who listens to them, nationally syndicated relationship expert, Angela Siegel. Hello, Michael. Hello, Angela. How are you? Fine, but you know what? Somebody asked me today on the way to work if it was okay if they spend the night over a boyfriend's house to use his toothbrush. Um, like early in the, this dating etiquette? Yeah, uh, and I'm thinking, well, would you do that anyway? Well, I'm gonna, I need to write a book What would on. be worse, to wake up with wolf breath? Or? <laughs> I think you, everybody should use their own toothbrush. Okay, well, <laughs> you can write about that in your next book, but I right now we have some singles in the studio who need some help. Please say hello to Evan, who is a hardware store manager, and Joanne, who is a home care worker. The two have been dating for a few months. However, Evan has an X to grind. Yes, he has a bit of a problem with uh, Joanne's, well, she frequently uh, visits her ex-husband. I'll let them explain it a little more, but I call this the case of the excessive ex-husband exposure, or triple X. Yeah. Mm. Well, Joanne, it sounds like you have uh, quite a visit going on often. Mm -hmm. What's going on? Uh, I go out once weekly to do dialysis with him. With him being your ex-husband? Yes, my ex-husband, Ron. He's got advanced diabetes. And Sorry, I go out. oh, dialysis, that's not... Uh, a new board game or anything? Uh, no, it's, it's not. It's serious. Not like okay, sorry, I'll either. stay out of this thing. <laughs> it's, uh, he's, he's got advanced diabetes and okay. uh, he can't afford, he lives out way back in the woods, he can't afford to get into the, the city to have his dialysis and done you, and I, I'm a home care worker. Okay, so you also have a relationship with... So Only in that sense. Okay, and what, I mean, what's the problem with that? I mean, it's, you should, I guess that's pretty nice. Oh yeah, it's kind of nice if, if that's the real story, you know, it's like... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I and mean, then it's the real story. I, I don't told know. You is, that. is it? It is you the know, real story. Because when I met her, we've been dating now for about six months. You okay, know, so thought, it's always that's all, for six months. That's always been the case, right? She's always gone out there to see. Yes, her it has. Yeah, yeah, sure. It's always okay. been the case. So but, when did you think it wasn't the real story? Oh well, because I've asked her many times just to meet this guy. Because if this is Look, part of her daily life, then I, you know, I'm going to be part Evan, of her I've life. Told Evan then I want to find out who this guy is. Ron right? doesn't want to meet him. And she wants to let me meet him. You come well, out while is, he's having dialysis. But, no, but he does. He has dialysis once a week. What about yeah. the other six days? Well, he's a really shy guy. He's a real loner. He lives out in the woods. He doesn't want to meet I'm not, my new guy. I don't want to watch you give him dialysis. I mean, I'm not going to sit in the room. I mean, I could I could wait outside in the cupboard. Give me time. Give him coffee and dinner. Joanne, how much time do you think you need? I mean, six months you all have been dating. Uh huh. So that means in six months, I mean, I'm not a mathematician, but that's a whole lot of visits. Yeah. And once a week, yeah. and there's six other days in the week. That's a lot of time to still have not met him. I mean, I kind of agree with Evan. Well, we went through, it was a really messy divorce, and I just don't feel ready to introduce the two guys, and, and Ron's just a very she, shy person. He's it's very, just, it's he's more very than quiet. That. And maybe, maybe she doesn't feel that the relationship is to the level where she should introduce you. Oh, that's the thing. You know, it's like a... I know. Look, I, I, she, I will she, soon, but I need to do it on do my you, time. Do it okay, on your but time. Joanne, but do you, do you care about Evan enough? I, I she, absolutely care about Evan. I love Evan. Then tell okay, me so the if truth. if you love somebody, why would you not introduce them to because it's not, your life? Because it's not time yet. What would be the time? What exactly when are you waiting for? When I think Ron will be comfortable with it, my okay. ex-husband. You know what, I, that, I go, you know, smells like fish, looks like fish, it is fish. That uh, smells fishy to me. I am a professional And it gets even more fishy worker. than that. 
It's not. It is, I go okay, because once I, a week. He's last not part Friday. Of my, last Friday. Friday. He's not I've heard part of my week, life. But once a week is part of your life. Mm. That is once a week professionally. Does he have to meet every single patient I go in? No. Ron is a patient. That's and that is nothing going on. That is not the same thing. You know it. That is not the same thing. We made plans last week to go out, right? And about an hour before, she calls up and says, listen, I don't feel like going out tonight. I'm just going to sit at home and I'm going to watch. So this watch was going to be going yeah. out with, we're, we're, with uh, No, the two of the us, two we're going to go have okay. a nice romantic dinner, right? I explained why I did that. Yeah. Yeah. Joanne, let's hear, okay. And she says, oh, well, I'm just going to sit at home and just watch some TV. I'm, I'm not feeling very good today. So I call her back in another hour or so and, well, there's no answer at her house, right? So I wait a little <laughs> bit longer and I call back and there's still no answer at her house. So I'm thinking, okay, what the heck is going on here, right? I, so I hit the incoming I uh, uh, redial I this. and I found out that she was calling from the same area code as where her husband lives. I mean, she spent the, yeah, the, the yeah, night with okay. her ex-husband. I admit, I admit. And I you got to make a I choice here now, you okay? You've you got to make a choice. Me, I was here. there. Him Let or me. me. Let me hear your explanation, because at this point, I feel like I ought to go get a, pool, a pole to fish, because you really are, this is really sounding funny. Okay, I didn't tell him the truth, because I was there late at night. I knew he'd be suspicious. He's a suspicious when I go in the middle of the afternoon. It was a rainy, thundery night, and I slept there. But I slept alone, not with Ron, and I knew that he would be freaked out if, well, if who he... Well, wouldn't? How about let's... You know, one of the things I think really is effective in these types of conflicts is put the shoe on the other foot. If he did that with a woman, and told you the, the reason he didn't tell you the truth, would you be comfortable with that? No. Okay, so why do you expect him to be? Because I need to work through some things before I fill him in on everything that's gone on in my life. Okay, well, you know what? I think now's the time to work through them because if you're going to, you know, you're, he's giving you an ultimatum pretty much, and I don't blame him. I think he held on longer than most. At this point, you have to come clean. Well, I mean, what is the deal? Okay. Um... <sighs> It's re um, okay. It's really hard for me to do this because I didn't. I wanted him to know me first, the me now. But uh, Ron and I divorced five years ago. And we have a daughter, um, six. Her name's Lisa. And the only way that I can see Lisa, because he has custody, I am allowed to see her once a week in his presence, because I was deemed an unfit mother. What? Because I had a cocaine addiction. What? Okay, okay. I knew you what were going to get upset about this. So let you, it's really you're... hard for me to get this out, okay? Joanne, I understand what you're saying and how hard it is to get out. But don't you think it's harder to get out now than it would be if you told him in the beginning? Before I... you had feelings for him? Before thought... he had feelings for you? I thought he wouldn't even look twice at me if he knew that about it. He said on our okay, first so date, you find somebody family who will. That's all. You move on to somebody who will, who can accept you as he's, you are. He, he's someone I want to be with, and well, that's what it I seems mean, to But he doesn't me. know who you are. Let's Evan, ask how do you feel? He does. I am Evan, how do you feel what, about what she just told you? I mean, well, I don't know how to feel. I mean, okay, is, is this all? Are, are you on no, drugs now? No, are you still no, I doing drugs? I, I went through an addiction I mean, center. Is, I have not touched them in I feel, five I feel like years. this is just the tip of the I've wedge. You know what I mean? I cleaned I'm my act up. I have not touched drugs in five years. I have become a home care worker. I have maintained a steady oh, income man. and kept my life clean. And that's who you know. <laughs> well, Somebody I mean, totally different from... Okay, but you, you know, know what? what? I'm the I mean, same woman. Let's at least be fair here. Okay, granted, it's a big bombshell, but there's some bigger issues. A, you know that she had a cocaine addiction. B, let's talk about the fact that she has a daughter that you didn't know about. She has a child. Right. Okay, which makes her not just a single person and like she, you knew she before. She needs me. Now she's a single mother. So how do you feel about that? Okay, well, first of all, it's not that much of a, a leap, you know. It, I knew you were married. I mean, a, a child wouldn't have scared me off, first it of all. It's not the child. It's like you're going to ask, why does a mother lose custody? And then I'm going to have to tell you. And I knew you were going to see me as some sort of messed up woman. As, and what, see, you as, see you as someone who's made a mistake? That's what you are. Want, I mean, I'll mistake. be back with my resolution. People make them all the time. You could have yeah, told me. I, right? I was going to tell you. No, People make mistakes. All people. Evan, obviously you were broadsided here with a lot of information. And I would never advocate someone withholding information because I don't, I don't believe in that. But I would ask you to at least um, understand the motivation behind it and that it wasn't hurtful. And then also uh, to give Joanne credit for the things that she has done, which you can quantify. She's kept a steady job. She's made an uh, effort to see her daughter every single week and has not fallen back on that. Those are the only things that she can do. She can't change what's happened in the past. So she deserves some credit for those things. Joanne, I understand why you didn't want to tell him, uh, but you, un you must understand that 
the issue is not him forgiving you. The issue is you forgiving yourself. Because until you do that, it doesn't matter whether he forgives you or not. You're ultimately the one that has to forgive yourself for, for what's happened. You can't change it. It's happened. It's already happened. You know, within a relationship, without the admission of a mistake, there can be no forgiveness. So if you can't admit that you've made the mistake, how can anybody forgive you? And that's kind of where you are now. By hiding it, you weren't admitting it. And without admitting it, he couldn't forgive you. So you've been in this, in this cycle. What I would suggest the two of you do is don't just end the relationship at this point. At least give it a chance. Give him a chance to get to know your daughter. Give him a chance to get to know what you're trying to do. If he decides that he doesn't want to forgive you and you have that right, then you move on because you do still have a life. You do still have a daughter. And it's ultimately what matters to your daughter is that you're a clean and sober mommy. That's what matters. Clean and sober every day, not just some days. Because in the long run, you want her to remember the mom, not the bottle, not the booze, and not the drugs. And that's that, the final word. Next on Singles Court. Brenda's fixation on fame is striking out with Bob. Every time she sees something in a magazine or on TV, she's going to buy it. Now her plans to add a little sting to their sex life have landed her in the penalty box. Now I'm asking for a vacation where we can connect to our soul. It's a sex vacation. She wants to go. You she wants to go. Sex, you know. Welcome back to Singles Court with nationally syndicated relationship expert Angela Siegel. I tell you, every time, every time somebody drops the bomb. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it just, uh, it's, some it, of them are very shocking, and yeah. some of them are pretty, you know, not shocking. That's but right. we'll see what we have in store for us today, because in the studio we have Bob and Brenda. Uh, they need your help. Uh, let me tell you first that Bob is a foreman at a lumber plant, and Brenda works at a doctor's office. The two of them been, have been living together for about three years now, which is, is pretty good. It's, it's taken this long to find something in the relationship worth squabbling over, I think. <laughs> but the problem arises is that Bob is finding Brenda's obsession with celebrities a bit too much to handle. I'll let him tell you more about it because I know he's got something to say, but I call this the case of obsession depression. So Bob, what's the big beef? Well, it's really very simple. Um, you see, it started small. I mean, every time she sees something in a magazine or on TV, like uh, lipstick, yeah, the Gwyneth Paltrow's got a new shade, she's going to buy it. She, oh, a, she sees yeah. a dress or a kind of pantyhose that Sherry's wearing, she's going to buy I that. Don't buy uh, it immediately. Uh, 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 what Tom Cruise, and, uh, and they got a new couch. She yeah. had to go and buy the same couch. So what's she the matter with that? Our house looks fabulous. Well, there's it's nothing wrong with that. A little, little expensive. No, it <laughs> wasn't expensive. I got it on sale. I get everything on sale. I know where to shop. Oh, I get on. my I've information seen the, I've from seen these the, magazines. The chat is just going crazy. Angela, these magazines give me good ideas. I get, I get inspirations. The couch that we had okay. was just fine. We it, didn't need to replace the couch. It wasn't. No, it was falling apart, what? Bob. It was 15 years it old. It was messing. What you're talking about is, let me give you a new word, advertising. They love that if she buys what they see. That's not unusual. It happens all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, well, that's fine. That's fine. But that's, this is just a symptom of the bigger problem because now okay. she's seen this well, thing. Let's get to the some movie problem. guy, some movie guy Sting. says they went Sting. to some uh, sex thing, some tantric sex a, a se uh, ranch or something retreat, like that. And now she wants Bob. me to do it. And I said, no, that, that's where I uh, draw the line. I said, this has just gotten out of hand. It's okay. got, no, you this know is something? too crazy. Bob has it's, a big problem. it's silly. It's stupid. If you want to buy all that other stuff, it's fine. But no. You know what? Let me give you a little rules. Okay, just like they have rules in sports, we have rules at singles court. One person at a time, because that's the only way I can hear. I have two ears, but they don't hear two different things. You know, so, it's hard. So could I speak for minutes, please? Yes, you may. Okay, you know, Bob didn't complain when we both went on Suzanne Summers' diet and lost five pounds and felt fabulous and looked fabulous. He didn't complain about the fabulous meals I made. He didn't complain about the large screen TV that I bought, like Jerry Seinfeld, which he sits in front of Every night. I didn't now, object this, to the TV because it's a TV. It's that, got a great uh, resolution and great Sting detail. But it's a Jerry Seinfeld. It. Why do I have to buy because it's got a Seinfeld name on it? She bought it. She's what she likes. What do yeah. you care? And he, well, don't he blame me. I don't like it because it. it's a good TV. But that's, I don't complain about Bob, that. No. But it's you know the final point. You're dragging me off of my intimate details. I'm not going to go on this yoga retreat instead of just focusing on orgasm. How about a personal. Wait a minute. How do we go from. Orgasm to yoga to a TV. 
<laughs> I blame, well, because I blame. he sees it all as the same thing. He sees anything that's remotely connected to the stars as ridiculous and commercial. Well, you know something? Bob knows a little bit about that. Bob's totally obsessed with the sports world. Look no, at no, the way no, he no, dresses, no, Angela. Let's, no, let's he get, never let's takes these clothes off. I don't you know like what? Both others. of you are obsessed with talking. Because I, I can't even think. Okay. Yeah, really? Okay. Please. All right. Now, you have a problem with the fact that you say he's obsessed with the sports world. Mm -hmm. I would have never guessed. Mm -hmm. Give me an example. Okay. Uh, well, you know something? Uh, let's just, just uh, tell about what our main point of focus when we talk, okay? Our conversation, it revolves around, let's see, uh, Tiger Woods' magic ball or uh, uh, the, the baseball guy's uh, uh, shoes or, you know, this is all Bob thinks about Bob's uh, uh, well you know something. Bob is that true yeah, I mean yeah. is that is that all you talk about not all I talk about it's no all you talk but about I work it's all you think about you know when I have my hair talk about that yeah you talk yeah okay. she's uh, she's in a line here yeah, tell her to be quiet for just a second okay you asked me a question it's true, yeah. Uh, sports is one. Sports is my big hobby. Okay. That's true. That's what it, I, I work hard all week. I come home. This is my hobby. I have a collection. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm, talking I'm, I'm, about collections, Angela. Please, can I show you just a small? She's a doing picture? it again. Please, oh. okay. I have a picture which will demonstrate. You asked. Do you, I have a question. Uh. Do you do you like hound the celebrities? I bet they run like hell from you. Okay. Here. Can I just say something about that? If you'll notice in the picture of that bedroom, Angela, please. You know, because he tells me that I'm silly and commercial. Look around the bedroom. It's it is not a bedroom. It is my piece. rec room, okay? okay and my television room. It's like your little bedroom. where I go to relax. Okay, okay, okay. okay, okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't, so, I don't so, spread wait, wait, wait. Let me ask a question here. The I have Everything has a logo. The hat Bob, the don't t involve everybody Bob, time in my out. Time out. I, I don't have my the... whistle with me, Bob. <laughs> if Shaquille O'Neal had a tantric sex retreat, would you go to it then? You got it. You got it. That's exactly it. Yes, you would. Can you? Okay. You know what? Excuse me. I thought the words were coming out of my mouth. I said no. I will not. Because it has a sports logo on it. It's got a Bart Starr on that. Hey. Let's look at this plain and in black and white. Okay? You don't like the fact that she's into the celebrity thing. She doesn't like the fact that you're in the sports commercial thing. But yet the two of you have been together for three years. So obviously there's some middle ground. Let's talk from that point. Okay. Where do you all have a middle ground? That's what I want to know. Yes. The problem is, is she wants me to, <laughs> the problem is she wants me to take my, my sex life, my personal intimate life, and share it with a bunch of strangers. Yes. I don't want to okay, do that. Okay, Bob, Bob, you but know something? I'm talking about a vacation. Angela, would you please ask Bob where we took our last two vacations? Now he's saying that I don't share, that I don't compromise. Please ask him where we took our last two vacations. Okay, I'll take the bait. Where did you take your last two vacations? New York, and uh, uh, two years ago I took her to Canada. Okay, all right. So what's wrong with that? Angela? New York. You think of New course York? there's something wrong with that. You think Broadway, you think Greenwich Village, you think Soho, you think, you know, New York, right? Well, we went to a place called Cooperstown, New York. It's the, uh, the, 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 the baseball, baseball Hall of Fame. center of the world. I don't know. And we spent two weeks eating American hot dogs heritage. and french fries and Do you guys, baseball games. I have a question. Do you guys have family? No. Bet they don't visit much. No. Well, unfortunately, because we can't work this out. Please. Now, the second vacation, you think Canada, you think pine trees and mountains and fresh air. We went to a place called uh, Toronto, where they have uh, a hockey museum. It's something else. A hockey museum. This okay, is so you didn't like the vacation. All the time. Two years in a row, and now I'm asking for a vacation where we can connect to our souls, where we What's can that? get a little bit intimate. Will you talk the whole time like you're doing now? Because no. I would go by myself. No. Okay, question. Why can't you go? Tell me, give me one reason why you don't want to go on this vacation with her. I'll Since you went to two I'll for you. In, I'll go on any, I will, I told you. I'm not, it's a sex vacation. She wants to go. You she don't want to have sex? Well, you know, you have sure, I want to have sex up. in the privacy so of my own room. I don't want to share with, with a bunch resolution. of strangers. Goodness gracious. here are two people talking at each other. You know, Bob, I think you like arguing. I think you enjoy it. Uh, it's really become your comfort zone. A lot of what you do, the excessive talking about sports, partly is because you like sports, but the other part is you know it antagonizes her, and you like it. You, on the other hand, you're guilty of the same thing. You, you like it too. You know, you enjoy the conflict, you enjoy talking about the celebrity thing because you know it annoys them. Otherwise, it would just be a TV. It wouldn't be Seinfeld's TV, and it wouldn't be Gwyneth Paltrow's lipstick. You, know, you, you enjoy it. Both of you like it. It's become part of your relationship. And you know, when chaos becomes part of your relationship, 
what happens is it becomes your comfort zone. And as long as that's your comfort zone, it's very difficult to rise to the next level within a relationship. It's become the way you live. You know, it doesn't really matter where you go for a vacation because no matter where you go, the other one's going to complain about it anyway. You see, nothing will change in your relationship until you decide that it's time for us to put aside the chaos and work on the relationship. The relationship would mean the things that we have in common, the reasons why we love each other. So what I suggest you two do is shelf the chaos, call a timeout on the sports memorabilia. As far as you are concerned, stop taking pictures of celebrities and following what they're doing just long enough to concentrate on the relationship. Because when you both do that, the game that you're playing, but it's funny what happens, because what happens is both of you win. There are no losers. You both win, and as far as the sex is concerned, it'll be better than ever, because you're both in it for the same goal. You know, a touchdown. And that's that, the final word. Well, there it is, the play-by-play -play from the relationship celebrity herself, Angela Siegel. Join us next time here at Singles Court. The final word for singles.